Namaste and in La Catch, and welcome to this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel, and this week's guest is Karen Pascal. She is the CEO, founder of Mind and Body Holistic Way. Uh, she's all about restructuring your life, and she's got 12 components in her program to bring together to help balance your life and give you a true way to to move forward so she's also a contributor to start healthy magazine and uh, podcast host of soul light and body mm -hmm. so, karen i am <laughs> so happy to have you here i hope i did that introduction well perfectly perfect perfect thank you so much zen for inviting me to your platform and for allowing me to speak on your platform it's a blessing when we could collaborate and when we could flip that coin, as we just were saying, <laughs> flip sure, the mic. Sure. Well, and the flipping the coin for the audience sake, um, Karen uh, had me on her podcast with her wonderful co-host uh, just a few weeks ago. And so we're right, kind of flipping right. the mic back and forth and uh, having a great time doing so. Yes, yes, yes. It, 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 I feel honored to be sitting here with you this evening. And I do as well. You know, it's just an honor to be able to have this kind of opportunity, especially yes. with the internet the way it is, is today. You know, this is just a wonderful way to communicate, share stories, peer into the inner depths of life, if we will, you know, right. or as we will, and, <laughs> and have some apocalyptic chats, right? Why not? So, speaking of apocalyptic, so in this life that you began and young now um, you actually began your life elsewhere correct yes i'm from guyana that's a country in south america that is where i grew up and then the latter part of my years i migrated to the united states and and guyana is um just in a beautiful region and you know a lot of folks are geographically challenged today so you're kind of in the north western or northeastern part of northeastern part yes South that's America. correct now in that place it, it's a completely different culture than americans and, and most other places in the world too what was it like growing up and, and as you have as our conversation prior has revealed that you've got a really deep awakening and spiritual knowledge and understanding and intuitive capacity. When did that first begin? How did you, you know, find out that that kind of life was actually um, advantageous? I'll put it that way. <laughs> I, I love that question. <laughs> I was, um, let's say like about maybe 15 or 16 at school, I find myself, people would ask me questions. And at that point in time, I, I did not really know too much about intuition and all of these kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But when people ask me a question, I would respond with an answer. I didn't know where these answers was coming from, but I would respond. And then they would come back and they would say to me, but Karen, how did you know that? But I, I didn't know where these things was coming from because at that point in time, my grandmother, because myself and my sister, we grew up with our grand, my grandmother, mm -hmm. and she was kind of like very deep rooted in spirituality, right? And then sometimes I would ask her questions and then she would say to me, in, time, in due time, you would know, right? And as I, as I grow right. older, I realized that it was something very deep because whenever someone comes to me and I would answer the question, I, as I grow old, I said, you know what, this is something really deeper than what I really know, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. As and, kids, we, we have those opportunities and if, when we're open as you obviously were not really recognizing and I was the same way as an empath as a kid. You know, you, you receive things and you don't really understand where the heck they come from, and yet there they are, right? And then as you grow to question, okay, where does this really come from? And what's going on here? Am I unique? 
you know, because oftentimes, and I'm sure you, uh, did you feel that others really were that way too? And then find out that, no, that's not necessarily the case. Um, yes, I felt, I think around like about when I was like 20, I felt to myself that, you know what, we all are the same, mm -hmm. but we never take the time to tap in to that. That is how I felt at that point in time, because I remember looking at people and then I would, I would kind of like, I wonder what that person is thinking. When I look at them, I will, I will ask myself, I wonder what that person is thinking. If I, if I see a person walking, I will try to tap in to see what they're thinking. I will look at their face, you know, and when I look at their face, I could see if they're sad or if they're happy. And then I would try to look behind that laughter or look behind that smile to see exactly what's happening with them. Mm -hmm. so I you, started to develop that. Did you ever hear any voices other than your own? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the the dreams, the that. voices. <laughs> now, so when that started happening, and so my frame of reference for this, in college, I had a spiritual awakening, and as you know, and part of that, or shortly after that, I was working in the cafeteria just a few, you know, maybe 100 yards away from the um, dorm that I lived in, and one day coming back from lunch, I'm passing students that are going towards the cafeteria and I'm hearing all this self-deprecating conversations, right? That start out with you, this or that, you know, and, and they were all just angry um, projections, right? And, and I was hearing the you. And so mm -hmm. I thought it was me. I hadn't learned to differentiate between the personal and, and global you, right? Yes. I'm hearing this you and I'm thinking that it's me. And I locked myself in the dorm room for several days because I didn't know what the hell was happening. Yeah. And then a friend of mine came over and finally says, hey, where, you know, miss you. Where have you been? What's going on? Right. And I told him what had happened. He said, you know, are those your, were those your voices or your voice or others? And when he yeah. asked that question, I realized, well, that was really other voices. It wasn't my own, but I thought it was at me. And he said, we consider you know, we're here with high expectations of ourselves and most of us are, are beaten up on ourselves. Yes. In yeah. the process, right? We don't yes. share what's going on inside of us, but in that internal dialogue, it's usually of that negative nature because we're <laughs> being pushed to perform and have somehow gotten this idea that we're less than. Yes. Yes. So that with is, you, that... how did you deal with the voices and, and what happened in that process? Great question. <laughs> I remember one instance that I remember I had a dream, right? And I remember the dream when I, when I woke up in the morning, I started to like relive the dream. Mm -hmm. And as I was reliving this dream, I heard these voices and it was so much of voices and it was different languages. So it had me really confused. No doubt. Because I know I'm speaking English, but I'm hearing all of these other languages. And I'm asking myself, what is really happening with me? Mm -hmm. Were that you getting any visuals time, at the time uh, along with I the did have visuals. Yes, I okay. did have visuals. I did have visuals. And the visuals that I had, it was like, some of them look like human and some was not human form. It, it's, it's the structures was totally different. Mm. So because of that, it had me absolutely confused. And probably but, a bit paranoid. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but as time go by, I would hear these voices for instance, I remember one one time I was I was at a a, 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 the, a supermarket in mm -hmm. my country, and I remember they said to me, "Walk to the door." And I'm saying, "Walk to the door for what?" In my mind, I'm saying, "Walk to the door for what?" Right? But 
I, that is why I always tell people, when you hear these voices, listen. Because as soon as I walked to the door, a big fight broke out in that supermarket. Interesting. Interesting. So this intuitive capacity that you had was actually uh, in somewhat a protector. Absolutely. Absolutely. More than one time, more than one time. Another thing that happened to me when I was back home, I, I had my pocketbook and I had a lot of stuff in my pocketbook because I, I went to get some jewelry. Oh, most women, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> so I had some jewelry in my pocketbook and um, I was going to have dinner. So I left the pocketbook in the car, but a voice keeps saying to me, Karen, get your pocket book. What I'm saying to myself, it's safe in the car. Why should I take it out from the car? There's no need for me to get it. I went into dine into the, uh, the place a waitress walked up to me and said to me, I don't know her. She said, did you leave your pocketbook in the car? And I was like, yes, but it's okay. When I went out back to the car, my pocketbook was gone. Mm -hmm. So you got that twice, once from inside and once from outside. Yes. yes. So it's interesting. So this is a, a correlation that we don't often... You know, the, what was it? I just heard Agatha Christie's, you know, the, the whodunits are built on, uh, there's no synchronicities. Yes. Right. So anytime there's this, and, and our stories, it really, we, we think, uh, I'm sorry, there are no coincidences. Sorry, everything is a synchronicity as you're paying yes. attention to life. I'm yeah, just, yeah. And, and by the way, I didn't mean to make a, a gender bias comment about the pocketbook. <laughs> So, that's fine <laughs> um so it, it in this uh balancing act of the internal and external how did you come to find a, a way to manage that effectively and and be functional because a lot of times when we're having these internal things we remain so separate from sharing them externally that yeah. it, it kind of causes a lot of conflict in our lives. And, and frankly, you know, when we do share things, I know growing up when I shared things, um, I got labeled, right? It, yes. And, and people just kind of, you know, still today, sometimes right. I don't know how to keep my mouth shut sometimes. And I go sure. boundaries and, um, and I lose people and, and it's okay. However, yeah. you know, it, it, that's, I wouldn't like to do that if I, you know, yes, and, and it's just wanting to share those kinds of things that inspires me to kind of go down that conversation anyway. Yeah. Like doing here, I'm, yeah. it's a very yeah. inspiring conversation to have this kind of reflection and, and um, of life stories, right? Yes, beneficial to others who might be in the same situation, and think right? It's crazy, right, um, right. So, in this inner and outer challenge that you had how did you find the functionality in it well <clears throat> the funny thing is that when this ordeal happened with my pocketbook it was a lot it was a lot of money involved happened with that pocketbook right mm. but i don't know at that point in time when this whole ordeal happened i remember I went back into the restaurant. I sat down. Everybody's looking at me. Because could you imagine you lost something of a lot of value? Mm -hmm. People expect you to be pulling out your hair from your head and behaving very crazy. Right. I went back into the restaurant. I sat down. I started to do some deep breathing. Right? Mm -hmm. And I remember my daughter said to me, she said, mom, but you're taking this thing very lightly. And I didn't answer her at the moment. I just continued to do my deep breathing. 
And then I said, wherever it's gone, that's my karma I paid. I remember saying those words. I said, wherever, whoever, that's my karma I paid. And I got up. The guy asked me, he said, um, do you want to report the matter? I said, yes, I can. But I, I said, I, I'm not seeing anything coming out from that. Right. That kind of, once it's gone, it's gone. You might find an empty purse or your ID somewhere. And if anything else, that's going to be gone. And you could look at it this way too. You had a Tony Robbins seminar in one hour. Right. <laughs> um, you know, because it was kind of expensive, right? But before you you know, now I'm really I'm really talking this story and I'm really looking back as you're taking me back, you know. Well, sure. I remember before I came on the road with my pocketbook, again the voice said to me, because I I had, I used back home, I had a tendency of walking with my passport everywhere I go, my ID. Mm -hmm. They said to me, remove it from my pocketbook before I left the house. And I removed it out from my pocketbook. So could you imagine if my passport was in there, that would, that would have gone to? Oh, yeah. That would have been a major kerfuffle. So after... So why did you listen? <laughs> no, this is the, the conversation we have with ourselves, right? It's like, and as evidence, you just reflected that as we're talking about this, you had yet another layer of reflection on yes. it. Yes. And, and a deeper, you know, understanding of, yeah, those signs were still there. And yet you still went into that. My karma paid it gladly. Good. Done. Right. Right. I'm done. Yes. And not I'm attached. Done. So to carry exactly. that forward is not the, you know, you could, however, you were wise enough not to. And this is kind of the, maybe the part of that inner and outer um, yes. elevation to get yes. to that place. And you had the understanding at that point to, to do it, to sit there and breathe and go inside and just, now, how did that come about? Where did you get that? instruction or that wisdom from was that from uh, your grandmother's elders the community all, um, my grandmother okay my because i remember my grandmother always said to myself and my sister never attach to anything she always said to us never attach yourself to nothing she said you came with nothing and you leave with nothing. So I always have that within me mm -hmm. that I never attach myself to anything. Never. And yet, there's still all of these things, and I don't mean to, to diminish that at all, because that is mm -hmm. really a pertinent, uh, a poignant tasty and tasty tidbit of wisdom right it's yeah. to not attach yourself to anything now some might say well does that mean you just live your life willingly and, and um you know just kind of going through it without much thought or care or strategy or planning how would you answer that each day when you wake up from your slumber, your sleep, that's a chance you're given to love. Mm. And I see it as love. We tend to go through life. We have all of these thoughts. We are expecting so much from people. We want this to happen. When it don't happen, we run down the rabbit hole. Sometimes we stay in that rabbit hole. We don't come up back at all. We go into depression, anxiety, because we are not in that moment with love. Once we could be in that moment and love who you are 
I know that we are here for a short period of time. Enjoy those moments. If something comes up in our lives, we treat it with love and compassion and release it, let it go. Because when we, when we tend to be in a space and we expect so much, that is when we get disappointed. Hmm. No, we've been having, it's so true, absolutely true. Um, and I think we all experienced that in the process of learning. Some of us take a little longer than yes. others. Right? Yes. Um, it's like, you know, we were having a, a discussion on LinkedIn and also in, in the friendship best uh, for the biz catalyst group. And it was about transformation. And the analogy was of a snake or a lobster, you know, where a snake is molting its skin and it comes out a greater being as a result. And it still has to shed that. Right. And then the lobster also sheds its shell. Right. And, and yet the transformation is a bit, uh, quite a bit quicker. However, there's some vulnerability involved in between mm -hmm. the soft and the hardening of the shell. So right. in our lives, you know, we can transform really quick, but there's got to be some intense vulnerability in the process because you got really, really have to get honest with yourself and you ask the right questions to do, to, find that place mm -hmm. and then the answer mm -hmm. just kind of seemed to pop up as you're living with that question which i think is probably one of the more important facets yeah. of the two you don't expect an answer the expectations and the an and the anticipation is where i was going because there's two different things when you expect something yes you often have unspoken and unfulfilled yes expectations right yes however when you anticipate something that's when you set it up to actually happen you don't know what's going to happen you just know something right is going to be a result because you set it up for that to happen and so there's anticipation mm -hmm. rather than an expectation yes and yes two totally different energies, yes right yes yes so how do how did you move through that and um I mean, granted, the wisdom that you just shared is profound. Thank and you. No, that didn't come overnight. What'd you go no, through? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. how, how did you, uh, what were the it, stumbles and falls like? And, oh, wow. And, and moreover, how did that getting back up and moving forward, what were the key notions that you picked up? Maybe it'd be better to just you know, focus on those key points rather than the dive deep into the rabbit hole again. Yeah. There was a point, there was a point in time in my life that I, I was in a rabbit hole. I went into a rabbit hole because I was very confused. And for me to really come out from that rabbit hole, I had to surrender. I had to surrender. I remember I got up surrender one morning. To what? To who? To the divine. Right. To the divine. Right. To source something higher than myself. So just a complete letting go of. Of that ego. Ego and expectation. Yes. <laughs> to bring that back in again, right? Yes. Yes. I had, I just had to surrender. And as I was about to tell you, I remember one morning. I, I got up pretty early in the morning and um, it was very dark. I start, just start walking. It's like three, like three, three thirty in the morning. And I just start walking. I didn't know where I was going. The streets were, the streets was pretty dark. There was nobody on the streets. When I meet to the head of one street, I had some guys who was waiting to, because in our country, they normally cut cane to make sugar. Hmm. So I had these guys was waiting for a truck to get on this truck to go to cut the cane. Right. And they asked me where I'm going. I did not answer. I just continued walking. And as I was walking, a car pulled up with some other men. They stopped the car. I remember one guy saying to me, where are you going? I did not answer. 
I just continued walking. And I remember the other guy in the car said, that's a ghost. Let's drive. That's a ghost. Let's drive. So as they speed away, I turn around and I went back home. I passed the guys again and I went straight back home. The guys who was waiting to go cut the cane, I passed him and I went back home. And I, as I enter and as I enter my yard, I fell on my knees and I opened my hands and I said, I surrender. I said, this cup that I'm drinking from, I don't want to drink from this cup anymore. I surrender. And I got up and I went inside. And as I, as I went inside to my home, I had a Bible and I picked up the Bible. <clears throat> and I don't know if you know this story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I don't know if you know that story in our Bible. With the three guys that, that was in the fire. Okay. And I was led to read that story. The voice said, read that story. And I read that story. And when I finished reading that story, I truly understand what was happening to me. I was going through the fire, but I'm not going to get burned. I will emerge out from the fire. And I was never the same from that day onwards. Never the same. So there was another, um, let's say, an interactivity of whether you were aware or not, you knew just to continue not be distracted and if you had have been if you'd have given them any attention whatsoever you would may not be here now absolutely right um mm -hmm. and yet even with that focus of attention they saw you in such a state as that was a little spooky to them and they just didn't want to mess with you yes. and as well now that of course the area of the world is, is steeped in in some indigenous um belief systems and things like that and then the the culture is quite different than it is here in america and and so those obviously helped to <laughs> you know anytime 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 i remember the, remember this story i always remember there's so many things could have happened to me so many sure. things Oh yeah, and and information. You know, depending on the the source that you choose to get your reflections from, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. the Bible, the Quran, or yes. the Bhagavad Gita, or the Vedas, or you know any of those types of, of scriptural references, those stories are there. And, and I found that throughout them all, the stories are really similar. And as you mentioned earlier, the love that's the core it's to love and be loved and it's not a terrestrial love as we have often conditioned ourselves yes to, uh, yes think and, and believe it is necessary although that reflection or, or reward if you will is what it feels like right because when you're loved and you're nourished and you're cherished and you feel like um at least temporarily anyway, that it, it's, um, it's often hard to take. It's like, you know, how yeah. am I worthy of this? Right. And yet we are, this is kind of how the yeah. universe is set up for us to mm -hmm. experience the joy and the happiness through the aspect of love and our activity in the world as a result. And it doesn't, it, and it's not based on a book. This is based on what you've experienced and yes. how you interact with this and um because that's a an, an ongoing process you can't carry it around a reference manual <laughs> that's so true that is so true that and yet so you true. do and yet yeah, you do because yeah. that reference material is inside of it, you it is in here yes it is in here yeah it is in here now, as you got older, how did that lead you into the, the further work and, and how, what was the impetus in, in coming to America? Well, as I, as I, as I grew older, I, I had these outer body experiences, mm. a lot of outer body experiences. And 
I have a dream, I see my body floating. It's going through this spiral light, you know, going up and meeting with other beings that I don't know. Sure. And of course, at that point in time, it had me a little bit confused because remember, you're all learning in this process. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, what in, in that this process, because I know many other people have these experiences. And again, they don't talk about them because they're afraid to. So in this, and some people even want to have them, but, you know, like you're talking about it, the question that came up was like, well, how do you do this? Right. And so in the process, as prior to, as, as you're moving into and having the beginning of that out-of-body experience, what were the things that were happening in your mind, in your body, the sensations, the thoughts, or the lack of them? What, what was happening? Can you describe that? Well, the first outer body experience that happened, I remember I, I was, I, I did a very deep fasting. Mm -hmm. I like for one month and I didn't have any meat. And for two weeks within that month, I, oh, I had no salt. I was just having fruits and like porridges. Mm -hmm. And after that month, I had my first outer body experience. My body became so light and I could have feel this sensation within my body. Okay. You know? Can you describe what that sensation, can you put some, I, I know it may be ineffable. Let's try, try and make it, it was ineffable, right? blissful. So blissful. Very was there blissful. a frequency that went along with that or a yes. sound or a tone? Was yes. it high pitched or low pitched? Way high. Okay. Way high pitched. Because I remember, I remember one morning I woke up and I could have heard this echoing happening in mm -hmm. my ear, a loud echoing happening. And I was like, oh my God, what's going on with me? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that this loud echoing happening within my ear. Then I remember, I remember that I was looking up at the sun one day and I just could have seen like my eyes with the rays coming and going. I saw that happening, this race coming and going as I look up to the sun. I saw this race coming and going. So, and I felt joy, this joy. I, I felt so overwhelmed with this joy, right? And at that time, I remember when people come and they would ask me a question. Oh my goodness. It flow, that flow. It was so amazing. That flow was so amazing. Now, these questions were generally about advice, personal yes. positions, things of that nature. Right? Yeah, things of that nature, yes. It wasn't necessarily uh, the solving a math equation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right. But it, it, you know, these kinds of, of things, it, it's been my experience too. Um, you got to do your own math. Uh, the science, however, is on our side because this is uh, seems to be part of how we are made. So there's a construct, which yes. means that there has to be a science somewhere. What yeah. is it? Uh, magic is just science that hasn't been explained yet, right? Yes. And so how do, with these out-of-body experiences, then what kind of other relationships were you able to engage and, and both in this world and others if you're willing to share right i know that, that can get a little vulnerable but we're both kind of weird people and, and we don't do that right yeah i remember i had um i had one dream i'll share i'll share two dreams with you okay. i had one dream and this dream was a bus the bus I walked into the bus, but when I look, there was no ending to the bus, which you expect to see a back of a bus, 
Sure. But there was no ending. It was all seats going on and on and on and on and on. Right? And they had a driver. When I look at the driver, was not of this world. Then I start to see these people start to board this bus. But the bus, the people, it's not like us. And they start to walk and come into the bus. And as I sat on the bus, I'm just looking at them passing me and mm -hmm. they're going in. Because it's like I sit to the front, they're coming up the step and they're passing me going to the back. I'm of not the going bus. to the back of the bus. I, I can't even see it. Right? <laughs> and they're passing and they're going at the back of the bus. And I remember I looked around and when I look, it's like they're, they're going, but then they continue walking, mm -hmm. going, they continue walking, going behind me, right? I'm, on a, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm saying to myself, who are these people? Who are these people? Because they said nothing to me. There was no conversation with none of them. They was just there, board the bus and walk. So was there a, a sense of, of comfort or peace or, or uh, tension? Or did you notice what that was? Just, just calm? Hmm. I just, like how, like how I sat here, I just sat and I'm looking them boarding the bus and they're going. <laughs> they're just going. And they weren't human? No. 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 They're not like us. Totally different. <laughs> totally so, different. So that was the beginning of something, I would assume. What, what came after that? After that, I had another dream. The other dream that I had was with a bell, a huge, huge, huge bell came out from the sky and at the bottom of the bell had a, 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 a circle with lights, bright, bright lights. And it came down. And as it came down, as I'm talking to you, my ears is ringing. As it came down, <laughs> it came down. This light was so bright and it comes straight to me. I touched the bell. There was a lot of people around me, mm -hmm. but the bell came straight to me. I touched the bell and it went back up. Went right back up. Yep. So that was the dream after the bus. So in these other realms with the people, what significance did that bring into your life or understanding of other activity that might be happening? And, and were there moments um, intermittently where, you know, we can have the whole experience in blink of an eye, or, or some of us do. Were there moments like that where there were, were insights or reflections or um, communications that, took place at like, for instance, the ringing in your ear just now, as you went back to think about that place, yeah. did, you, did you tie into, uh, what do they call that? Um, uh, a morpho, um, a field of or, or memory field or, or something or frequency that allowed that to come back through again. These are things that you know, you and I have experienced throughout our lives, we still don't have the answers for, right? Yes, Let alone questions. Yeah, right? yes, <laughs> yes, yes, um, yeah. Now, how do we, what, what do you think this brings to life in general for you in your ability to function in the world or, or do the kinds of things that are more fulfilling to you? I would say that after, th there's a lot more, but mm, after, I'm sure there after, is. yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> I mean, more. we're talking, you know, many years and we're truncating into an hour, right? That's almost. Um, point. I remember, I remember after the bus, I started to being led to read certain books. Then I remember I started 
my whole awareness about life and the perception about things started to shift. Mm. There was a shift. And I started to meet new people. There are many friends that fall away. And I remember hearing saying to me, never to worry about someone who leaves. Never to worry about someone who leaves. Mm -hmm. They told me that. And I remember still the human form studying. Oh my goodness, I lost this friend. You know, I feel so bad, you know. And one morning I remember I got up and I was going more inward now. I, 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 because I, I'm, I'm a person very curious. <laughs> no, I always seek. I never imagined that. <laughs> I always seeking. I always want to know, right? And I started to go inwards, and I remember I sent out a message to some of my friends, and I said that don't feel any way, but it's current time now. Just like that, it's current time now. And I remember one girl, she called me and she said, what is current time? And I said to her, I'm going inward. And she said, what's inward? I said that you will not understand what I'm saying because you're not on that frequency to understand what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. But I said, I'm going inward. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, when, when I emerge, mm -hmm. I'll let you know exactly what's the inward journey. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this, this is something I totally understood exactly what you meant. Now, from your friend's standpoint, and this is kind of what's taking place in the world, we can only see and understand what we're capable of, right? Which is what our, what our experiences provided to date or what our belief system, yes. however Trump, you know, um, however BS it might, it might, or however much BS it might be, <laughs> it it's still it we can only see from that place and, and the language used the expressions the um, the energy even in the communication that we make from that place is different and you can't really pick up on it unless you've had an experience of it and that's an individual journey Absolutely. Yeah. it is and it can be excruciatingly fun or it could just be fun and as you yeah. said, that when you submit, when you surrender, the, these are the things that we're taught to do, right? Yeah. That we resist, and the more we resist, then the more things we feel that we've got to fight with, and then, and then you're pushing and pulling energy. Well, that's not how the universe is designed. It's designed for flow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, how did I mean, you find that flow in your life in, in this transition from the... Um, kerfuffles you were having it, it into the kind of life that you uh, in, moving to America and, and engaging a, and creating the kind of life that you have now which is quite still when, magical right yeah sometimes I can't believe it sometimes I can't believe it sometimes I can't believe it because I remember telling myself when I was back home I said to myself I need a change. I said, I need a change. I need my life to change now, you know? And I remember, get the whisper. They said, it's going to happen. Be patient. Be patient. You know, because we want things happen overnight. Many times we just want yeah, things happen absolutely. in the moment. It's got to be in our time. Dant, you know, it, it, <laughs> I want it. I want it now, right? Um, they said patience be, be patient. damned, right? And and yet, patience is a virtue. Well, why is it so? Because we usually, nearly always, when we set our 
focus and atten on attention, intention, and interaction on a goal, and we steadily work toward that and are patient enough for it and do the steps necessary, ask the right questions, understand the steps. Yes. It's like an entrepreneur that starts with the vision in mind and, and then, you know, brings it back in a business plan. And here's the step-by-step -step process to get there. Well, life's the same way. Yes. And how did you find that in the process of going from Guyana to America and um, in the proceedings that took place then? Wow. So after, after I heard, be patient. So I condition myself now. I'm going to allow things to flow. I, I get out of the way and allow the divine to flow. Mm-hmm. And when that happened, everything started to fall into place. When I got out of the way, everything started to fall into place. Everything started to fall into place. And as things fall into place, it gave me that strength to understand that there is a higher power. Well, and that, and I'll offer this too, could it be that simultaneously as you were seeking, what you were seeking was seeking you? Absolutely. You got that right. <laughs> That's the, we're finding even with quantum physics that that may even be an aspect of quantum entanglement that we haven't discovered yet. Although we do have some language about it to explain why those yeah. kinds of things happen, because there's an obvious method. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Now what, so with that obvious method, then it's more of a process we can plug into almost a scientific method, right? Mm -hmm. Because we know when we do certain things, certain things happen. We don't necessarily know the exacting detail. Yeah. And yeah. that really doesn't matter. That's not what we're intending for anyway. What we're intending for is the experience of mm -hmm. that connectedness and, and that value of one another that comes from that place of love. Yes. Yes. Totally agree with what you're saying there. Totally agree with what you're saying. Because... Not to, isn't it? Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, when you were, uh, again, I, I'm trying to get you to move to America, damn it. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I eventually, I, I eventually I came. Right. So how did that, what were the, the pieces that you thought were most significant at, in your process that edified your understanding of the process? Does that make sense? So what specific details, what synchronicities showed up that you recognized and took advantage of? So after, as I said to you before, after I said what I said, they said, be patient. Mm -hmm. I started to travel back and forth because I had a, I had a booty back home and I'm a cost, was a cosmetologist back home right. too. Right. So I would come, I would come, I would come here and I would buy all my products, buy all my clothing and I would take it back to sell. Right. Mm -hmm. So as I'm back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and I met one time at my business and the business wasn't going that good anymore. Things started to change with the business mm -hmm. because there were other business that was popping up. So things started to change. And when things start to change, I said, this is the point for me to leave. I said, this is the point for me to leave. And I remember, as I said that, One person came to me and they asked me if I'm willing to sell. <laughs> so that it was a clear indication. Now that's a call and response if I ever heard one. So after, uh, after I started seeing see these things happening, I said, you know what? It is the divine timing for me to do what I have to do. And right. I just... It's funny how... 
you know, up until recently, I, I think more and more people are recognizing these kinds of things can be more the norm than what we once thought. You know, back when I was growing up and, and you were growing up, we talk about this kind of stuff. Then people go, ah, you guys are nuts. Yes. That, that just doesn't happen. It never happened. You know, it, and why do we limit ourselves oh, yes. so religiously? Right. Yes. And, and this seems to be part of, of this whole process of, and I don't know that it's purposeful as a dumbing down. However, it is purposeful from a management and control aspect and, and managing resources and manpower and things like that for the time and money scenario, which is what we're in in the outer world right now. Well, how do we, how do you see that as you've watched this process happen throughout your life and we're in a completely different place now, especially coming out of the pandemic, how do yeah. you see this transition and transformation of humanity happening? Or do you? For me, the way how I see things with the whole pandemic thing that happened, I think the world needed to wake up. I think a lot of people was really sleeping and taking things for granted, you know? And I think that, for instance, like families, right? Mm -hmm. They may live in a home and never even see each other. Sounds like teenagers today. <laughs> you know, they live in a home and they never see each other. Right. Parents didn't even have time with their children to sit and have a conversation with their children. There are, the, there are the future generation that we really need to curb at this point in time, you know? And it, it really takes us down a real different journey to really understand the true meaning of life and to understand that in a twinkling of an eye, things can happen to us. Mm -hmm here on earth because we wake up every day. We don't even give gratitude. We don't even be grateful for our lives. We just on the go, 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 go. We don't stop. We don't pause. We don't listen. So something had to pause us because we don't pause. So the pandemic. I would, I would say sequestration and, and, you know, massive sequestration would tend to be that big pause button they got pushed that was a big pause button for us you know we, it, it, is sad, it, it is sad that a lot of people lost their lives within the process right well we just but, knew about it more i i don't know that numbers were that much different than a normal flu system or system season and the reason being is that most of us don't pay attention to the numbers even though they're there now these numbers this time were plastered in front of us and we were made to pay attention to it and whatever was happening they validated by statistics and, and numbers yeah. now at the same time though um, i started to say i told my wife and that we went down or locked down in march of 2020 i said to her you know i really hope this obsession on self-hygiene and sequestration will get people to turn inward and examine themselves and lo and behold many did more are and I think we're going to see a groundswell here within the next, I don't know, maybe six months to a year of people that are coming up and saying, wait a minute, we can and do have the power. We can change and have the power to do so. Of course. Do it globally, which is a planetary civilization. We ought to be at a place where we can begin to work as one. Yes. As opposed to fighting for territory and resources. Right. What's that going to do? We're still people. We're right. one people, one planet. You know, can we do that mm -hmm. one time? And, yeah. you know, the, there's a number of people who, up until recently said, no, we're not going to do that. And because we're going to control it all. And or, yes, we are going to do that. And we are mm -hmm. going to control it all in the process. Well, that again is that push and pull of energy. And that's not going to happen. The universe is going to say, nope, sorry. <laughs> Best laid plans of mice and men, right? It's, um, or the, what is the joke, you know, um, tell your plans to God and watch him laugh. Yeah. Um, 
how do you see this you know maybe at a core level of the kinds of changes that are happening internally with people and how that's showing up in the world now as a reflection of that what do you see in that i so see you guys talk to a lot of different people and you're yeah in i see a lot of awareness happen a lot of awareness happen to a lot of people and I, I was speaking, I was speaking to a client, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And she said to me, she said, she's so grateful for the pandemic. You know, she said she was grateful. Now that's some non-complimentary behavior now, isn't it? And I said, why? And she said to me, she said, Karen, you know, it helped me to find myself. She said, it helped me to find myself, you know? And a lot of people, as you rightfully said, they are waking up to what exactly is that. They're going within. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going within themselves. And because they are going within, they are finding the answers that it was looking for for years. For years. And of course, some people are having a very hard time when they go within, because it's a lot of things you got to drench up here now. Well, the, there's all the BS, right? All the belief systems that were there in place that have to be either suspended or eliminated. And then allowing that new experience or that new living awareness yes. to take root and mm -hmm. begin to inquire of life more from that perspective and, and be right. open to it rather than oh, i don't believe that can happen you know i've gone through life i don't know what i can't do yeah you know we're told anything is possible why yeah. not right i don't know if i can do that or not let's try or you know you get a group of people together and you have an idea and it's like well wouldn't it be cool i don't know let's try absolutely right mm -hmm. And that kind of attitude, I think, it, especially now with the workforce shift uh, to remote working, people are realizing, hey, I don't have to go to an office anymore. I can do my own gig. I can have, right. my, you know, mm -hmm. have my life and cake too. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of dreams was being birthed. A lot of dreams mm -hmm. was being birthed through that pandemic. People, did, people didn't even know they had those things within them. Mm -hmm. Yes, they didn't know they had those things within them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Life, life is beautiful. I'm laughing because we would have just said it's amazing in stereo. <laughs> now, how, right? Those are the kinds of synchronicities that yes. we, and, and this is, you know, it's not so woo-woo. We just were an example of that, of how naturally that came about. Yeah. This, and, Speaking of natural, this all seems to be a natural design that we are finally acquiescing to yes. this inner and outer bridge. We've been, we've understood perhaps maybe even, or maybe weren't aware that we live half yeah. inside and half outside, yeah. right? Because yeah. we've been obsessed with out here thinking that will make in here okay. Yes. And then the self-love comes and you got to pay attention to you. And then the rest of it comes because you yes. shifted that personal attention to the self-love that you need first and, and finding yourself yes. and, and then looking for it in the world. And it, you don't really have to look for it at that point because it shows up. Because once right. you get it, then the world, <laughs> the world reflects it. Absolutely. And your life just completely changes. It's like two different people. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That is so true. Yeah, totally two different people. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Now, what what kind of things can you suggest to others that might help them uh, move into this new living awareness or this natural order that uh, is emerging? And and there's evidence, or you know, from science and medicine. Well, medicine's part of science, and even the spiritual. Uh, 
prophecies of the old of old right and many things are coming true now we're we're entering a new age well what that what's that going to be like don't know well yeah. we've just begun it you know yes. because the pandemic it was like okay here's the moment mm -hmm. of change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i my advice is that meditation breath work find a routine especially a morning routine that would, is going to work for you for me it's meditation mm -hmm. i wake up very early in the morning that's current time i make that connection and once i do that my day in the evening i wind down my day i have my current time before I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that, that your time, as we talked earlier, right? You wake up about 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, yes. as I do as well. We live in two different areas, two different time zones, and, and yet this seems to be that that time frame. I noticed it probably a oh, decade and a half ago. It'd been happening. However, I finally started paying attention. Right. It's like you when you first start doing it, you wake up and then you fight it because you want to go back to sleep because yeah. you're supposed to be asleep at that time. Right. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, it's like, OK, wait a minute. Well, what's going on here? Right. Mm -hmm. You start wondering mm -hmm. or, or at least being open to. And, and in those moments, there are so many um, the variety of communications taking place. Absolutely absolutely and there's so many messages in that period of time you get so many messages mm -hmm. because I, like people say Karen why you like to do it so early I like the stillness mm -hmm. I love that I love that tranquility because I I feel as though I could I could wrap myself in that space with that divine light you know, and just enjoy that. And it, yeah. it, it, it gives me, it gives, it gives me that recharge that I need for my day. Sure. Sure. Now for me, I got to a place where I would get my marching orders for the day. And I, I was at a mm -hmm. place where I had, I was doing partnering workshops for building road and bridge construction. So I would only have one or two of those a month. And that would be, you know, a, just a day and a half, maybe two at the most. I'd get paid well enough that I could kind of hang out for the rest of the month doing my writing and websites and, and right. nature, right? Again, it wasn't that I, I sat, I was really busy doing other mm -hmm. things in, in mm -hmm. preparation for things to come. And I, I kind of knew that at the time. And yet there's this opportunity is, is once you have this, um, you have your coursework done, right? In those early morning conversations and interactions. And, and then the last thing that happens before you feel that impetus to finally get out of bed is you get your marching yeah. orders for the day. Does yeah. that happen to you as yes. well? Yes, 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 yes. Because every day, the last thing I say, the last two sentences I say after my meditation, how can I be of service to humanity mm. and provide me the tools I need today to be of service? Those are my last two sentences when I finish my meditation. And it happens. Those were sentences. Those were inquiries. Right? You start the day with living the question. And everything falls into place. I would just get an idea, I write it down. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it may not serve me today, but the next day, it served me to help somebody. Sure. Sure. And the, the interesting thing here, point well taken. It's not a linear thing. No. You get used to non-linear, sometimes even non-local activity yeah. when, when it comes to the mind, because as the mind works, there's this bouncing back and forth of 
you know, the multiple choice game, uh, yes. or question game. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You've got a lot of things on your plate simultaneously. Yeah. And then there's this other aspect of, of the non-local mind that seems to pop in with the right answer at the right yes. moment or the right person that shows yes. up. Yes. And you yes. realize that how interconnected things are yes. and that there is this flow and it feels quite weird at first when you're acquiescing to it because it's yeah. so different than the person you were before wanting to control yeah. everything yes 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 That's, you're absolutely right what you're saying uh, and i'm sure you know it, that's something that you experience as well yes yes because sometimes you find i let's say let's say i'm i'm, I'm writing a letter right mm -hmm. i pick up a pen to write a letter and I may start a sentence and then you would hear, don't write it like that. Write it like this, you know? And then the words just come to tell me exactly how oh, to I just think that's the perfectionist me coming out, right? <laughs> you know? And then right. I would say, okay, I'll, I'll do it this way, you know? Because I have that interaction happening. I'll, I'll, I'll sure. do it this way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It, it truly is. So, um, wow, I, it, it, that time's gone by. We're, what time it is? <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Nothing but like you know time what? dilation, it, right? We're in the flow. <laughs> sure. Time flies. You know, the, the few gentlemen in, uh, have written about that. Uh, Mihaly, Csikszentmihalyi, one of them in his book called Flow, the, op the Psychology of Optimal Experience, he akins it to a jazz quartet that yeah. is, has leapt into an improv piece and has lost track of ego, time, yeah. direction. They're just flowing with each other in, in a musical conversation. And that's yeah. really kind of what life is oh, when yes. we allow it to be. Yes. Are there any parting, uh, is there a parting insightful gift that you would like to share with the audience as to something they may be able to do on a daily basis? Yes. Just be present. Pause. Take that pause. If you're at your work, just get up from your desk a five minutes, a two minutes. Just walk and pause. Make that connection with that source. Whatever is your source, make that connection with your source. Every morning you get up out from your bed, have a morning routine. Whether it's meditation, is yoga, is getting on your knees and praying, whatever works for you, do it. It's very important that we have a morning routine in our lives because that helps us to kickstart the day. And when we have a morning routine, we have a lot of messages that we will get to catalyst through us through the day and help us with every, whenever anything arises in our lives, whenever situation, because situation would always comes up in our life. But when situation comes up, we could able to understand exactly what that situation is trying to teach us and not go up against the situation. Look at the situation, see what the message you could get from the situation. Treat it with love, treat it with compassion. Because many times you may find you enter an office and someone, maybe that be so nice to you in that office right? Ask yourself the question, what is happening with that individual? That individual will be going through some sort of, it could be a spiritual experience they don't understand. It could be an experience that happening in their lives, with their, their home, with their spouse, with their children. Try to understand what is happening with that person before we judge. Those are my parting words. Very good. Uh, live in love, <laughs> live in unity. <laughs> there you go. Got to have that one too, right? And, and and for as good as we can, we invite 
that opportunity in our lives. Yes. Yes. Cool. Yeah. I so appreciate your time, Karen. This has been just a wonderful conversation. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll carry on again soon, I'm sure. <laughs> you will. <laughs> there will be another part because there are yeah. more things to come. <laughs> Absolutely. And namaste. Namaste. In, in La thank Ketch. you, Zen. I'm Zen Benefiel. This is, and thank you for sticking with us for this episode of One World in the New World. I will see you next time. <laughs>